Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving word problems on law of sines and law of cosines involving angle of elevation and angle of depression. Before we go over this example right here, let's have the definition for angle of elevation and angle of depression. In this picture, we have a plane, a person, and a horse. We also have a blue line. We also have a broken horizontal line, and we have a red line. This blue and red line are called the line of sight. That is the direct line from the person's eye all the way to the object. Well, if we say this broken line right here is called the horizontal, that is from the person's eye straight forward. If we say angle of elevation, this is defined as the angle from the horizontal upward to an object. So this is the horizontal line. If we say angle of elevation, that is from the horizontal line going up. So this angle right here will be called the angle of elevation. That's the one in blue. So I'm just going to label this one up here. On the other hand, if we say angle of depression, this is defined as the angle from the horizontal downward to an object. So this is the horizontal line. If we draw an angle right here on this corner that is directed downward, then we go ahead and say this is the angle of depression. So I'm just going to label that down here. Okay, to wrap it up, Elevation or angle of elevation is the angle that's going up from the horizontal. Well, if we say angle of depression, that's the angle downward from the horizontal. Okay, going back to the examples right here, two scuba divers are 30 meters apart below the surface of the water. They both spot a shark that is below them. The angle of depression from diver A to the shark is 52 degrees, while the angle of depression from diver B to the shark is 44 degrees. How far are each of the divers from the shark? So we can go ahead and say that this diver A, so um, this diver A and diver B are on the same depth from the surface of the water. So we can go ahead and say that this is our diver A right here, and this is our diver B. We go ahead and say further that they are 30 meters apart. So I can go ahead and say that this distance that we have here is 30 um, meters, and then they spot the shark below them. So let's go ahead and say this is the location of the shark right here. So let's just label this as C. That's where the shark is. So then we can go ahead and say that um, this line of sight that we have here, it says that on angle A, the angle of depression from diver A to the shark is 52 degrees. So angle of depression would be 52 degrees. So we can label this as 52 degrees right there. And then the angle of depression, Depression from diver B. So this is diver B. So the diver, um, the second diver or diver B sees the shark, which is again located on point C. The angle of depression is 44 degrees. So we can label this as 44 degrees. So that is the angle of depression. By the way, the picture that I've drawn here are not drawn to scale. Okay, so it says that we are supposed to determine the distance from the diver to the shark. So from diver A all the way to the shark, we can label this as X. Again, you can assign any variable for this, but let's just use letter X. On the other hand, we wanted to determine also the distance from the diver um, all the way to the shark. So let's just name this as our Y. So in this problem that we have here, we can actually use the law of signs to solve for the distance from di diver A to the shark and the distance of diver B to the shark. Now we remember that the partners that we have here would be angle C and across from that is uh, the distance from A to B, which is 30 meters. 
and then the partner also would be this angle 44 and then the X and the other partner here would be angle 52 and the Y. Now looking at this picture that we have here, we are actually missing angle C. So this angle right here, we can actually solve this by using the idea that the total measure of the angle inside a triangle is 180 degrees so that we can go ahead and set up the equation that we have right here. So that would be 180 is actually equal to, that's going to be 52 degrees plus 44 degrees plus angle C. So we wanted to determine what is this angle C right there. So then we go ahead and solve for C. Okay, so we have solved angle C. Okay, so then from here, we can go ahead and solve for side X. So we are going to use the law of sine for this. So we're going to partner them up. So we can go ahead and say that sine of 84. So I'm just going to write that down here. So that's sine of angle 84 over. That's the sine of the angle over the... Um, length of the side across from it. So that would be 30. That is actually equal to the sine of, we wanted to solve for x first. So then that would be a sine of 44. So I'm just going to write that um, up here. Sine of 44 over, that is x, which is our missing. So that we can go ahead and see that the um, proportion that we actually did was actually sine of the angle over the side across from it. So sine of the angle over the side across from it. So that we can go ahead and cross multiply so that we can solve for x. So this is how the equation is going to look like. So that would be um, x times sine of 84. So I multiplied this Two right here and then I'm going to multiply the 30 with that of sine 44 so that is sine 44 right there so that we can go ahead and solve for x by dividing sine 84 from both sides so this is divided by sine 84 and then divide this by sine um, 84 so we can cross out the sine 84 and the sine 84. So we are left with x. So if we use the calculator on this, this would give us 20.95. That's going to be in meters. Now, please remember that before we solve problems involving law of sines and law of cosines, we have to make sure that our calculator is set to degrees. So this is the measure of the um, distance from the diver A to the shark. So that would be 20.95 meters. Now let's solve for the distance from diver B all the way to the shark so that we do the same thing. We're going to use the law of signs for this. So we're going to start with this uh, proportion that we have here that would be um, sine of the angle over the uh, length of the side across from it. So that would be sine 84 over that is the side across from it is 30 meters and then that is equal to we are solving for y so the angle across from y is 52 so we can go ahead and write sine of 52 over y so because these are partners so then we go ahead and say that we already have a proportion of um, sine of the angle over the length of the side across from it, sine of the angle over the side across from it. So we go ahead and cross multiply this and solve for y. Okay, so the distance of diver B to the shark 
is 23.77 meters. So again, please remember that before you solve for um, any variable that is missing on the law of sines and cosine, we remember that we have to set our calculator to degrees and not in radian. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. It says that CJ is flying a kite and the angle of elevation is 48 degrees and the kite is flying 40 meters away from her. Mark located closer to the flying kite is 17 meters away from CJ on a level ground. Sees the kite. How far, that is the direct line of sight, is the kite from Mark's location? How high is the kite flying directly above the ground. So there are two missing um, variables right here, but we are going to draw this um, picture to better see how this look like. So first we're gonna draw the um, horizontal line. So this is our horizontal line right here. So let's say CJ is located right here. So I'm just gonna label that as letter C. So she is able to see the kite that is flying. Um, let's just take this as our uh, K, that's the kite. And then um, the direct line of sight from CJ to the kite is 40 meters. So we can label this as um, 40 meters right here. And then another given is that the angle of elevation, so that is from the horizontal all the way to the line of sight, is 48 degrees. So we can label this one right here as 48 degrees. And then we also have another condition right here. Mark is located closer to the flying kite, but is 17 meters away from CJ. So let's just label this as M right here. That's where Mark is located. And the distance from CJ to Mark is 17 meters. So I'm just going to label this one right here as 17 meters right here. Now we are supposed to um, determine the line of sight from Mark to Kite. So we can go ahead and say this is our X. Now in the other um, question that we have right here, we're supposed to determine how high is the kite flying directly above the ground. So we're supposed to determine the height of the kite directly above the ground. So that means it's gonna form a right angle, which is, um, I label this as 90. So let's just name this as our variable Y. We can go ahead and solve first for x here. This corresponds to the line of sight from Mark to the kite. In order that we are not confused with all of these pictures that we've drawn here, we are going to cut this portion only since we're solving for x because others are going to get like lost because there are two variables that are missing in here. So let's cut this picture. We will focus only to this triangle that we have here. So I'm just going to redraw that uh, triangle up here. Okay, so I've drawn this triangle right here since the first question here is the line of sight from M going to K, that's the X. So I took this triangle right here so we're not lost with all of these triangles that are formed in the picture. So we are supposed to solve for X using this triangle here. This again represents the line of sight from Mark's location to the kite. So then from here, we can go ahead and use the law of cosines for this. So we are going to... um set the equation right here. So that would be x squared. So the square of the side across the angle is equal to the square of the sum of the other two sides. So that would be um, 17 squared plus 40 squared minus twice the product of the two sides. So that would be 2 times 17 times 40 and that is multiplied by cosine of the angle in between these two sides or the angle across from the side. So that would be cosine of 48. Now we are going to um, determine this uh, square for both of these. So this would come out x squared is equal to 17 squared is 289 plus 40 squared is uh, 1600 minus 
2 times 17 times 40 times cosine 48 is 910.02. I rounded it off to two decimal places. So then we go ahead and add these two together. So this would come out x squared is equal to, that would be 1889 minus 910.02. So then if we subtract these two together, this, this would come out x squared is 978.98. Again, I rounded it off to two decimal places. So then we want to solve for x, which is the direct line of sight from mark to the kite. So we can square root both sides so that we can cross out the squared and square root. We are left with just x. Our x value actually is, if we use calculator for this, this would be 31 point. 29 meters. Again, we remember that before we solve problems involving um, law of sines and cosines, we're supposed to make sure that the um, calculator is set in degrees and not in radian. So this is our value for x. Now we are supposed to solve for the other unknown here. It says that we are supposed to determine how high is the kite flying directly above the ground. So we're supposed to determine this line right here, which is y. Looking at this picture here, others are going to say, oh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem for this. But remember, we don't know the distance from this all the way to the location of mark. So we can't, we, you can actually solve for that, but there's an easiest way to do this. So we can actually redraw this picture, the, the, uh, the triangle involving the y, it's going to look like this. So this is how the triangle is going to look like. There was a line M, but we took it out because we already solved it. But we want the Y. This is a right angle right here. And then we have this 40 meters, which is the direct line of sight from CJ to the kite. And this is 48 right here. Now looking at this picture, our Y is the opposite from the angle and our uh, 40 right here is the hypotenuse so that if we have an opposite and hypotenuse we're going to use the so so we're going to use so for this so stands for sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so that we can go ahead and set this up So this means that the height of the kite from the horizontal ground is 29.73 meters. Did you get the same answers as this? Yeah. Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.